Hello, and welcome to Poetry Out Loud 2023. I'm Tim Merlino, superintendent of ESD 112 in Southwest Washington. I want to start by saying thank you to our Poetry Out Loud participants and their teachers. Reciting poetry from memory, as the competition requires, takes a tremendous amount of dedication and skill from student participants. It also takes a great deal of effort from their teachers, who instill an appreciation for literature and help students to prepare for the competition. With the goal of equalizing opportunity for student participation, regardless of geographic location, tonight's ceremony is virtual. Participating students have recorded themselves reciting their selected poems from memory. Judges have viewed these submissions and evaluated them accordingly. This is the same process that worked very well for us last year. The high scores from each regional competition will move on to the state competition and a state championship will move on to nationals. Students gain so much from this experience, public speaking skills, self-confidence, literature appreciation, and a new outlet for creative expression are just a few of the many takeaways. I'm excited to see the fruits of our participants' labors. Enjoy the show. You are the ice cream sandwich connoisseur of your generation. Blessed are your floral shorteralls, your deeply pink fanny pack with travel-sized lint roller just in case. Level of splendiferous in your outfit, 200. Types of invisible pain stemming from adolescent disasters in classrooms, locker rooms, and quite often Toyota Camrys, at least 10,000. You are not a jiggly puff, not yet a wiggly tough. Reporters and fathers call your generation the worst, which really means queer kids who could go online and learn that queer doesn't have to mean disaster or dead. Instead, queer means splendiferously you. And you mean someone who knows that common flavors for ice cream sandwiches in Singapore include red bean, yam, and honeydew. Your powers are great, are growing, one day, you'll create an online personality quiz that also freshens the breath. The next day, you will tell your father you were wrong to say I had to change. To make me promise that I would. To make me promise and promise. Like the sweet apple which reddens upon the topmost branch, a top on the topmost limb, which the pluckers forgot somehow. Forgot it not, nay, but got it not, for none could get it till now. Like the wild hyacinth flower, which on the hills is found, surpassing feet of shepherds forever tear and wound until the purple blossom is trodden in the ground. He was a big man, says the size of his shoes on a pile of broken dishes by the house. A tall man, too, says the length of the bed in an upstairs room. And a good, God-fearing man, says the Bible with a broken back on the floor below the window, dusty with sun. But not a man for farming, See the fields cluttered with boulders and the leaky barn. A woman lived with him, says the bedroom wall papered with lilacs and the kitchen shelves covered with oilcloth. And they had a child, says the sandbox made from a tractor tire. Money was scarce, say the jars of plum preserves and canned tomatoes sealed in the cellar hole. And the winter's cold, say the rags in the window frames. It was lonely here says the narrow country road. Something went wrong, says the empty house in the weed choke yard. Stones in the fields say he was not a farmer. The still seared jars in the cellar say she left in a nervous haste. And the child, its toys are strewn in the yard like branches after a storm. A rubber cow, 
A rusty tractor with a broken plow. A doll in overalls. Something went wrong, they say. Truth is, I would like to escape myself, detach my body from my skin, peel it layer by layer to uncover, beneath the surface of petals and thorns piled up year after year. Who I am and who I want to be. I want to be the flower that grows in dirt, the feather that flies free between the cracks of fences. A wise woman once told me, don't worry about you, worry about who you could be. I want to be the woman who sits at a desk and writes pieces of oceans, rivers on a white space in a place where imagination has no border. I never thought I'd keep a record of my pain or happiness, like candles lighting the entire soft lace of the air, around the full length of your hair, a shower organized by God and brown and auburn, undulations luminous like particles of flame. But now I do retrieve an afternoon of apricots and water interpierced with cigarettes and sand and rocks. We walked across how easily you held my hand beside the low tide of the world. Now I do relive an evening of retreat, a bridge I left behind where all the solid heat of lust and tender trembling lay as cruel and as kind as passion spins its infinite tear conversations in between the bitter and the sweet. Alone and longing for you. Now I do. It was not death, for I stood up, and all the dead lie down. It was not night, for all the bells put out their tongues for noon. It was not frost, for on my flesh I felt Sirocco's crawl. Nor fire, for just my marble feet could keep a chance so cool. And yet, it tasted like them all. The figures I have seen said orderly for burial reminded me of mine, as if my life were shaven and fitted to a frame and could not breathe without a key. And twas like midnight sound when everything that ticked has stopped and space stares all around, or grisly frosts first autumn morns repeal the beating ground. But most like chaos, stopless, cool, without a chance or spar or even a report of land to justify despair. This may sound queer, but in 1985, I held the delicate hands of Dan White. I prepared him for burial. By then, Harvey Milk was made monument. No myth by the years since he was shot. I remember when Harvey was shot 20, and I knew I was queer. Those were the years, Levi's and leather jackets holding hands on Castro Street, cheering for Harvey Milk, elected on the same day as Dan White. I often wonder about Supervisor White, who fatally shot Mayor Moscone and Supervisor Milk, who was one of us, a Castro queer. May 21st, 1979, a jury hands down the sentence, seven years. In truth, five years for ex-cop, ex-fireman, Dan White, for the blood on his hands. When he confessed that he had shot the mayor and the queer, a few men in blue cheered and Harvey Milk. <laughs> Why cry over spilled milk, some wondered semi-privately for years. It meant one less queer. The jurors turned to White. If just the mayor had been shot, Dan might have had trouble on his hands, but 
The 12 who held his life in their hands maybe didn't mind the death of Harvey Milk. Maybe the second murder offered him a shot at serving only a few years. In the end, he committed suicide, this Dan White, and he was made presentable by a queer. I like the generosity of numbers, the way, for example, they are willing to count anything or anyone, two pickles, one door to the room, eight dancers dressed as swans. I like the domesticity of addition. Add two cups of milk and stir the sense of plenty. Six plums on the ground, three more falling from the tree. And multiplication, school of fish times fish, whose silver bodies breed beneath the shadow of a boat. Even subtraction is never lost, just addition somewhere else. Five sparrows take away two, the two in someone else's garden now. There's an amplitude to long division as it opens Chinese takeout box by paper box. Inside every folded cookie, a new fortune. <laughs> and I never fail to be surprised by the gift of an odd remainder, footloose at the end. 47 divided by 11 equals 4, with 3 remaining. 3. Boys beyond their mothers call 2. Italians off to the sea. One sock that isn't anywhere you look. Children under, say, 10 shouldn't know that the universe is ever expanding. Inexplorably pushing into the vacuum, galaxies swallowed by galaxies, whole solar systems collapsing, all of it acted out in silence. At 10, we are still learning the rules of cartoon animation, that if a man draws a door on a rock, only he can pass through it. Anyone else who tries will crash into the rock. Ten-year-olds should stick with burning houses, car wrecks, ships going down, earthbound tangible disasters, arenas where they can be heroes. You can run back into a burning house, sinking ships have lifeboats, the trucks will come with their ladders, if you jump, you will be saved. A child places her hand on the roof of a school bus and drives across a city of sand. She knows the exact spot it will skin, at which point the bridge will give, who will swim to safety, and who will be pulled under by sharks. She will learn that if a man runs off the edge of a cliff, he will not fall until he notices his mistake. I am offering this poem to you since I have nothing else to give. Keep it, like a warm coat when winter comes to cover you, or like a pair of thick socks the cold that cannot bite through. I love you. I have nothing else to give you. So it is a pot full of yellow corn to warm your belly in winter. It is a scarf for your head to wear over your hair to tie up around your face. I love you. Keep it. Treasure this as you would if you were lost. Needing direction, in the wilderness life becomes when mature. And in the corner of your drawer, tucked away like a cabin or a hogan in dense trees. Come knocking and I will answer, give you directions, and let you warm yourself by this fire, rest by this fire, and make you feel safe. I love you. It's all I have to give. And all anyone needs to live and to go on living inside when the world outside no longer cares if you live or die. Remember, I love you. Ooh.